You've heard about scorpions, but what about scorpion flies? These strange creatures, while they might sound like a work of fiction, are indeed real, and if you live anywhere in the world that isn't the desert or Antarctica, there's a chance that these primitive insects are living alongside you right now. But do they sting like scorpions do? Do you have to worry about these animals? I'm Mikey Green, and today we're searching the upland forests of northern Georgia for these charismatic creatures to answer these questions and so much more about the incredibly unique biology of the scorpion fly. But while our main target is proving quite difficult to find, their closest living relatives are quite common, and it wasn't long before we were able to catch one. This absolutely gorgeous creature that I have right here is a black-tipped hanging fly, which is by far the most common species of Macoptera out here in these habitats in northern Georgia. Macoptera in general are pretty habitat specific, living in these kind of wooded areas that are very moist, with lots of leaf litter on the ground and lots of dense foliage and tree coverage. This kind of habitat can basically not be found anywhere near me in South Florida where I live. So I've never seen a single Macoptera in my entire life. So finding this black tipped hanging fly, while it is the most common species out here, is still very awesome for me as it is a lifer for me. These are called hanging flies because you can see those very long legs, those six very long legs. They will hang from branches and from the bottom of leaves in search for their prey. Yeah, that's right, these things are carnivorous. Macoptera in general are carnivores eating both live and dead organisms, and hanging flies are no exception. In fact, something very interesting about hanging fly hunting behavior that is not found in our main target, the scorpion fly, which is a very close relative to this hanging fly right here, is that they do what is known as a nuptial gift, which means that the males, which actually I believe this is a female, but the males will catch a small insect prey item and try and attract females using food. This behavior of giving nuptial gifts is almost completely unique to these hanging flies right here. This black-tipped hanging fly is an absolutely gorgeous species with all yellow body and legs, clear wings with black tips. There are some more modeled species of hanging flies that can be found out here. However, even though this black-tipped hanging fly is the most common and probably the most expected to find out here, it is a gorgeous species. All right, I think it is time to let this beautiful hanging fly go and keep looking for our main target, the amazing scorpion fly. All right, back to scanning these expansive woods for scorpion flies. Unlike hanging flies which perch on the bottoms of twigs and leaves, scorpion flies prefer to sit on the top of broad leaves, maybe a few feet up from the forest floor. After a bit more scanning, I finally noticed one of these beautiful animals sat perfectly on an oak leaf. All right, children, this absolutely beautiful insect is exactly what we're out here in the wooded areas of northern Georgia out in search for. This is the elusive scorpion fly, one of the most unique insects that you could find in the entire world. These things don't even look real to me, with that very long rostrum, an even longer rostrum, in fact, than that of the hanging fly, its close cousin. And, as you can see, that namesake scorpion tail. That is only found on the males, and that scorpion tail is actually not venomous like you might think it is. That tail that looks just like the stinger, the venomous stinger of a scorpion, is actually what the males use for mating purposes. At the end of that long and very flexible tail is a bulb, a genital bulb, with these two hook or forcep-like structures at the end. Those are what the males will use for mating. At the end of the abdomen, the females just don't have this. The abdomen just tapers to an end, and that bulb-like structure isn't there, that almost prehensile tail is not there, and especially those forcep-like cerci are not present at the end of the abdomen. But don't get me wrong, that little stinger-like structure at the end of his abdomen is still kind of sharp, and is still a pretty useful defense against predators. That tail is very flexible, and when I was first catching this, it was actually looping its little abdomen right at me, trying to sting me, I guess, with that little spike at the end of the abdomen. It doesn't hurt at all, but I could imagine against a much smaller predator like a lizard, that might do maybe a little bit of damage at least. This individual is in the genus Panorpa, and I'm not 100% sure what species it is, but I have not only never seen any member of the genus Panorpa before, I have never seen a scorpion fly in general. Today was my first time seeing that species of hanging fly and a scorpion fly in general. So I'm just getting my fix of Macoptera in today. A few of the species of Panorpa have this very similar pattern, 
where the body is mostly yellow with some black spots on it. And the wings are kind of tinted brownish and have these beautiful black patterns that kind of make it look like a stained glass. Another thing that all members of the genus Panorpha have in common is that very long rostrum, which has some mouth parts at the end, some sharper mandibles, and some softer, fleshy palpi, which they use to guide their food into the mandibles. This long rostrum is very useful for scavenging because unlike hanging flies, which are mostly predators, scorpion flies can be both predatory and scavengers. That long rostrum kind of serves the same purpose of the vulture's bald head. It can help this scorpion fly make its way into a dead carcass and eat the nutrients out of it without risking infecting some of the more vulnerable parts of the scorpion fly's body, like the eyes especially. In fact, scorpion flies are such good scavengers that they are oftentimes among, if not the first insects to show up at the site of a newly dead roadkill on the road or any dead organism in their natural habitats. These scorpion flies are very habitat selective. Just like the hanging flies, they can only be found in these dark, moist, wooded areas with lots of tree coverage and dense foliage where their larvae can survive and where there's enough food for them to be able to eat. This is why I've also never seen a panorpa because these don't range anywhere near where I live in South Florida either, just like the hanging flies. These strange insects might not look like they're related to anything else, and honestly, they're not closely related to anything that exists today. However, their closest living relatives are thought to be the fleas and the true flies. But scorpion flies, just like hanging flies, have four wings, whereas flies only have two wings. The back two wings of flies have evolved into a structure known as haltiers, which they use to control the direction of their flight. But scorpion flies do not have that, but that's not stopping them from absolutely flourishing in these environments. Even though they are extremely rare, if at all present in South Florida, and are an absolute gem to come by in central and northern Florida, they are very common out here in northern Georgia. Mostly the hanging flies, but I love finally finding one of these amazing Panorpa scorpion flies. And I think that just for the jokes, I should let this thing sting me. Ow, this hurts so bad. Ow, it's injecting all of its venom into me. I, I meant to say all of its poison into me. It's injecting its poison. Ah. All right, that did nothing. If this doesn't prove to you that these are completely harmless creatures, then I don't know what does. If you see one of these flying around, there is no need to fear. It might look aggressive with that scorpion-like tail, but no worries. They are not venomous at all in any capacity. And they're just gonna be flying around looking for small insects as well as carry on or dead and decaying organisms. So I'm gonna let this little guy go right back out into this beautiful wooded area here in Northern Georgia.